Imagine, if you will, a river. Not just any river, mind you. This is the river of your dreams. A special place far from civilization and teeming with trout on every cast. The call of the rushing water beckons you to wade forth into a fisherman's <laughs> bliss. Think you're dreaming? You won't want to miss this fishing show. Close your eyes. Picture the river of your dreams up in the far north. Now keep going north. You didn't think this was going to be easy, did you? Now you can open your eyes and get ready for a few plane rides with legendary bush pilot Johnny May. Wouldn't you know, even in dreams, there are travel challenges. Ten minutes from boarding your last float plane ride, the weather grounds you for two days. While clearly unavoidable, it makes you all the more anxious to reach your destination once you're back in the air. You begin to wonder if it can really be worth all this. But finally, home. Without further delay, at long last you make your first cast. Woo, there he is. And naturally you land a brook trout. Fish. The second cast yields another brookie, and now you start pinching yourself. Wow! Oh, it's real, all right. Look at that. <laughs> it's like a piece of art that's alive. All the colors yeah. in there. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Let's let him back in. And just so you know, your dream river is actually the Leaf River up in northern Quebec, nestled between James Bay and Ungava Bay. Your journey has been rewarded, courtesy of Leaf River Outfitters. You know what amazes me that an outfitter like Leaf River Outfitters Camp could build an oasis in the middle of the wilderness here. We're 200 miles from the nearest town. When I heard that there was a television crew coming in, I was very excited because it's a very good way to see how good the fishing really is. There's fish. Ooh, nice one. Little guy, here he comes in. These brook trout, or spotted trout, are a staple here. So I got a feeling there's one right here. Finally moved down to this current edge right in front of us here, and there's a boatload of them right there. Now these fish are strong fighters for their size. Whoa! <laughs> and they got a real soft mouth. I have the barb pinched down on this bugaboo jig, and it's just enough for them to uh, throw the hook. But I'd rather lose a few than kill a few, so I've got 12-pound nanofill on here, six foot six rod, medium heavy, and a fluger reel. But the truth is, every cast could be one of these giant Atlantic salmon that could spool you and take you all over the river. So I'd rather go a little bit larger than smaller. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Big fish, big fish! It's a laker. It's I could see the brown on his on his dorsal fin and his tail. Yeah, it's a laker. He doesn't yeah. have any color on his fins. He's going that way. <laughs> and just like that, the first laker of the trip. Hey, nice nut job. Whoa. <laughs> Look at the size of that guy. Boy, he's a dark fish. Look at that. You know, when he came up and hit, I thought I had a giant brook trout on. I'd, you know, you, you notice yeah, yeah, they you got a little the, hint of the, yeah. the hint of the white in the fins like a brookie. Yeah. But they don't. They have a little bit of that. A little worm. bit of a speckle, but not not a whole lot. Yeah. Very dark. Yeah. You want to slide him in right here? Yeah. Thank you. Finally, if you're lucky enough, you may even land an Atlantic salmon. Pretty much the fish of a lifetime for most anglers. After all, it's your dream. I got him! I got him! 
think it's a salmon. Woo! It's, a, it's, a, it's a salmon. It's a salmon? Oh, it's a big fish. Yeah, oh, salmon. beautiful. Yeah, salmon. Hey, you can see them in the water yeah. right there. Beautiful. I don't know, uh, Steve, if you can get maybe. Uh, Woo! Let them go, that's right. What a jump. If you could maybe slowly work your way over. If I can get them into this calm yeah. water here. You can't slow them down. I can't slow them down. All right, we're going after them. I'm planning for brook trout fishing. I didn't plan to hook a... Oh, he just got off. Got Don't go away. The dream gets better when North American Fisherman returns. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. By Berkeley Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene, America's strongest. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. And by these other fine sponsors. If you're just joining us, this week we're featuring the river of your dreams. Way up in northern Quebec is a once-in-a-lifetime destination that'll have you asking for more lifetimes. Feel the cold rush of water filled with painted brook trout, bruising lakers, and even Atlantic salmon. This is the sport of kings. This fish has a long history that dates back into the Middle Ages. The river is actually the Leaf River, and the dream is brought to you by Leaf River Outfitters. This river to me is very special because I've been working with Alan for 11 years, and I call it my home away from home here on this river. Come along and see how truly great a trout bite can be. <laughs> First cast this morning. We're gonna keep a few for shore lunch. Oh, these things fight so hard. <laughs> there he goes. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. you, you take so. these out of the water and they double in size. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not used to seeing brook trout that big. I'm just not. But up here, that's, this is the average fish. That's the average fish. This is the, the average you're gonna catch. Ooh. Oh, is this, this, this is heavy. There he is. I think that's a laker. That's a laker. Come on, get in here. I got that marvelous hook. <laughs> he took my plastic. I had, a, I had a Berkley power bait on there. We're gonna see if we can catch one on this right here. Got him. <laughs> oh, this is insane. In a lifetime of fishing, I've never run into a water like this. The brookies are just thick in here. We've got some big lakers. We've actually had some Atlantic salmon as well. Look at the colors in there. As beautiful as these fish are, it's time to eat. And what dream fishing trip would be complete without a shore lunch? Imagine what these trout would taste like. Sorry, you'll really have to imagine that part. Anyway, on to more fishing as there's Atlantic salmon lurking out there. Got him. <laughs> Got him coming here, Travis. I've seen him get his head up. Oh, well, he definitely sees movement, doesn't he? As soon as I bend down or the net move. Yeah, they got real good eyesight. You just get him. Oh, you turn him. There. Got him. Nice. The average fish in this river is, I would say, six to seven pounds. This one there is probably about five, maybe a little better than five. They, they'll get air when the longer they're in there, they'll get real yellow down there on the bottom, and their, their back will turn real black. Oh, that's fun to watch that swim away. Look at that. Got a fish. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, what is that, a salmon? salmon. Woo! Woo! Yeah, oh, go. salmon! Cool! Let's see if I can get him turned. <laughs> and keep his head going. Got him! 
<laughs> lean right in the water here. Right in the water, we can lean right in. You know, four, four and a half, maybe five. He's a little bit skinnier, this one. But yeah. You, you can tell by this one, the difference, even from the one this morning, look, he's getting darker. Yeah, he is. More of a yellowish, yellowish cast, and it's getting more fady around the back. Is that a cool fish? Ah, the fish of a lifetime. This is what you can expect from the Leaf River, should you plan this trek. Now, you're probably thinking these are exceptional fish caught for television. Let's ask the guide. I would say overall this trip was pretty well, maybe a little above, above average for most people. There's one, Travis. Ooh, this, this, this is big. Oh, but we're not finished yet. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man! Did you see that? Yeah. That's a big one. It was tail walking. Yeah. Yeah, they do that to kick the hook, you know? Okay, I'm gonna try and slide him toward us. Nope. You know, they call the Atlantic the king of sport fish, and I can see why. They're so strong, and these jumps are spectacular. Got him! <laughs> this is enormous! Look at that fish! Oh, what a fish. It's just gorgeous. You can tell he's still, he's just in from the sea. He's yep. real silver like he's saying. There he goes. Look at that. You know the term trip of a lifetime is probably overused. I can assure you, however, that this river is probably the best brook trout river I'll fish for my entire life. When you use the right gear, you catch more fish. And I want you to enjoy the exact same success that we did on today's show. That's why we're giving you a chance to win the selection of lines and lures that we use including a spool of 10-pound Berkeley Nanofill, a spool of 12-pound Berkeley Nanofill, three packs of 3-inch Ripple Shads, and three packs of 4-inch Chicker Cross. To enter this free drawing, go to Facebook and like the Fishing Club. Then, click on the TV Tested Win What's Working button at the top of the page and follow the simple instructions. Love the fish? Then like the Fishing Club on Facebook. There's a lot to like and a lot to win. Knot Wars is next, and then Dr. Hal Schramm looks at trout sizes when North American Fisherman continues. Welcome to Knot Wars, where we pick fishing's best knots in a head-to-head -head competition to determine which knot you can count on. Last week, the Trilene Knot knocked up a great knot in the World's Fair Knot. Remember, we're looking for the strongest knot for monofilament. For consistency, all testing will be done with 14-pound Berkeley XT Tough Red monofilament. The weekly winner will be the knot with the highest overall average after it's tied and tested a minimum of 12 times. If you missed last week's episode, here's a reminder on how to tie the trilene knot. Start by running the tag end through the hook eye two times to form a loop. Next, take the tag end and wrap it up the main line three to five times. Now, insert the tag end through the loop near the eye of the hook, moisten with a bit of saliva, and carefully draw tight. The challenger this week is called the Fishing Fool. It debuted in season three. You may recall it was the former Knot Wars champ. Here's how you tie it. To start the Fishing Fool, insert the tag end through the hook eye twice, and then run it up the main line. Next, bend the line downward to form a loop. Run the tag end around the doubled lines five times, Tighten the tag end first after moistening with a bit of saliva, then slide the knot tight to the hook eye. So it's the trilene knot versus the fishing fool. Which is stronger with mono? Let's find out. I have the trusty knot testing machine already set up. We've got our challenger here, the fishing fool on the left, our reigning champ, the trilene knot here on the right. Here goes. <laughs> what a battle. The trilene knot has beaten the fishing fool, but look at that score, 20.2, that's pretty solid. But the trilene knot's still holding tough, and that means it's a great knot with mono. And you know what that means? It means the trilene knot moves on to next week where it's taking on the no-name knot. Should be a great battle. By the way, if you'd like to practice the trilene knot, the fishing fool, or any of the knots featured in Knot Wars, simply visit fishingclub.com and click on Knot Wars. Or better yet, download the free Knot Wars app now available for Droid and iPhone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends in a broken knot.
trout anglers discovered catch and release. And using that, they've conserved, and in some cases, improved trout fishing. But there's biological evidence that suggests that, no, fishing probably isn't as good as it used to be. Biologists put together a bunch of population data that allowed them to model the changes in the numbers of fish of different ages. Brook trout grow to eight inches by age two, 10 inches by age three. By age four, they're 11 inches long, and they finally surpass 12 inches by age five. 12 inch makes for a good brook trout fishery. When they ran the models with different levels of hooking mortality, they found, as you'd expect, the abundance of large fish declined with increasing hook and mortality. An even greater effect was seen for the effective fishing effort on the abundance of large trout. At 400 angler hours per acre per year, there was a 50% decline in the numbers of age four and age five brook trout. 400 angler hours per acre per year might seem like a lot, but in a narrow brook trout stream, an acre might be a whole segment a half mile long. That's not a lot of fishing effort spread out over an entire year. In fact, many fisheries in Maine have fishing efforts that far surpass that. So with high fishing effort and even low hooking mortality, populations of large brook trout are gonna decline. Under those conditions, the brook trout are resilient. The young fish will mature earlier and they'll spawn earlier. You'll have good numbers of fish, but you're gonna be missing those four and five year old fish. You're gonna have a lot of two and three year old, eight to 10 inch fish. So indeed, the population models substantiate that fishing isn't as good as it used to be, even with good catch and release. Of course, the days are gone when you can wait a brook trout stream for two miles and not see another angler. Those were the days when there were 100 million fewer people in the United States. The main research definitely shows that anglers can affect the quality of their fishing. Catch and release is a good thing. More anglers using the resource, that's not going to change. You can do your part, practice catch and release. Handle the fish as gently and as quickly as possible. In the long term, maximum survival, good for the fish, and good for the fish. The following products have been field tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. The Fenwick Elite Tech Smallmouth Spinning Rod has new titanium frame guides and our new hidden handle design with tack inlay that provides enhanced sensitivity and comfort for all day on the water. Buster Kelly of Tyler, Texas liked the overall feel, performance, and size. If you would like to become a field tester, text the word FISH plus your email address to 57682. Which hook is the right hook? George Little knows when North American Fisherman returns. It can be very intimidating when you go to the store to buy fishing hooks. Just like line, there's a whole wall of choices. What do I need? Do I need an octopus hook? A circle hook? Today we're going to break down exactly what you need the next time you go bass fishing with soft plastic. There are two hooks I use primarily when bass fishing. One is the straight shank or the traditional light wire hook. The second is a wide gap or new style with the heavy wire. What's the key here? When to use which hook for what application. Hook size matters. Unfortunately, I see this scenario way too often. Way too big a hook for the size of the bait. People think that a bigger hook means more hookups? Absolutely not true. What you need to do is put the right size hook in that same bait. Now the bait will work properly, you'll get more bites, and you'll convert. Secondly is line size. If you're using six pound line, you definitely are gonna want a light wire hook. Why? because you're going to have to penetrate that fish's jaw and if you're using six pound line you're probably using a light action rod. You're not going to get a lot of g-force. If you're using a heavy wire hook it's going to be harder yet to penetrate that fish's jaw with light line. So remember light line, light hooks. The next thing you need to consider is cover. Heavy cover, heavy hooks. Most likely heavy line. So what does that do for you? The heavy line will let you exert enough torque to send this big heavy hook through that fish's jaw. And most likely, it's a flipping technique. The wide gap hook will allow you to use those big bulky baits and accepts it really, really well. So heavy cover, heavy hooks every time. Picking out a fishing hook doesn't have to be intimidating. If you remember these three things, what type of cover are you fishing? What size of the lures you're using? And what pound test you have? 
If you take those into consideration, the next time you go fishing, I guarantee you, you're gonna catch more fish. Today, we took the trip of a lifetime to the Leaf River in Quebec. When people come to this river, I think the main reason they come for is the Atlantic salmon. But once you get there and you see all the speckled trout and the lake trout, it just adds for an extra bonus to the trip. You know, a trip to Leaf River is, is, a, is a trip that you'll never forget. I made 42 casts, landed 42 trout. That will never happen again as long as I live. So now the only question is, when can you go? The prime time for these trout and salmon is August and September. Operators are standing by. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Gulp Alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. And by these other fine sponsors. Thank you